Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining uh, this webinar uh, from SAG Bangalore, which is going to be taken by Deepti Kata. And um, so Deepti has a lot of good experience with Sitecore, and she's going to be taking us through her experience with uh, working with Covio. And uh, Deepti, please go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Anandita. Uh, first, for giving me this opportunity, uh, I would like to thank uh, Sag and Anandita for reaching out. Uh, I am really excited uh, to share uh, with everyone on the line today, and uh, you know who would be watching this webinar later uh, about my journey uh, in terms of uh, solving uh, problem solving with Coveo uh, on one of our enterprise level clients at Wendell. Uh, so just a quick introduction about uh, myself before we dig, dig more deep into the topic. Uh, so this is Deepti here. So good morning, everyone who's joining from India. And uh, good evening, good afternoon for uh, people joining from elsewhere. Uh, so I am a technical leader at Wendell right now, uh, working with the cross-functional team teams, uh, you know, making sure they are moving forward with the challenges that we uh, face every day uh, and uh, ensuring we deliver uh, a quality product uh, from Verndale. Uh, so um, that's a quick introduction about me. But if you're curious to know more about me, uh, you can always, you know, uh, ping me on, twi on Twitter or, you know, reach me, reach me out uh, later uh, on LinkedIn as well. Uh, so let's get this started so today i'll be uh, talking about uh, you know specifically our journey with one of the enterprise level clients who we implemented Covio for uh, it was a, a roller coaster ro roller coaster ride and i would like to uh, take uh, all of you on on it today um, so let's uh, get this started so I'll start with a quick introduction to Coveo, uh, just to ensure if anybody is just joining us curiously to know more about Coveo, or like uh, they, you know, ensuring that whoever is joining us today, uh, you know, follow the content along with me. Uh, so I'll just start with a quick intro to Coveo, and then we will move with uh, the problem solving uh, in terms of technical challenges that we have had and uh, how we faced it. Um, and then at the end, uh, I guess I'll go uh, go ahead and talk about some of the deeper tools that Coveo comes out of the box, uh, which are extremely powerful. So let's start with an intro. Um, so Coveo for Sitecore is uh, integration to Coveo's full-fledged search engine. Uh, what this means is like, you know, they are, the Coveo people are really smart. Uh, so what they developed is they developed a core search engine. And uh, uh, what uh, what they have done is they have done beautiful MVVM patterns so they can use that Coveo search engine with other technologies like Sitecore, uh, Coveo for Salesforce, and uh, I think they have a bunch of other project uh, products. Uh, so when you actually try and install Covio for Sitecore, there are a bunch of out-of-the-box components that get installed on your machine. Um, one is the Covio search API, one is Covio admin, uh, admin, and then there's uh, the main core uh, Covio search engine itself. Uh, regarding installation, uh, just a quick note would be like you got to follow it like a Bible, <laughs> but at the end of the day, when you are successful, you get to know uh, a really cool product. Uh, but uh, but yes, it it really tests your skills to uh, ensure that you're following a paradigm of spec uh, of uh, steps. And uh, once you install Covio for Sitecore, uh, what would happen is uh, you would actually see that, like, you know, uh, with the newer versions of Coveo, they follow the uh, similar paradigm that Sitecore follows. So they never edit any, like, you know, configuration files of your Sitecore instance. They always have it via patching. Uh, one of the main configuration files that everybody should know is their custom configuration file, uh, which is where all the, uh, you know, customizations you would make for your Covio instance exists all the settings exist, um, and uh, basically all your global uh, Covio related settings exist in there. Um, uh, and you can access these settings, some of these settings, directly to uh, Sitecore control panel. So once you are successfully installed the Covio for Sitecore, when you go to your uh, Sitecore control panel, you get to uh, see and edit some of those uh, core settings uh, via the control panel. And uh, what it also does is, uh, uh, you know, the configuration files that I just talked about, it gives you power to kind of uh, state what you want to index and how you want to index. Um, and it is 
immensely flexible. Uh, you can you can choose what not to index versus what to index, and you can also configure some of the uh, cool computed fields, which we'll talk about shortly. Uh, but that's that's really uh, you know one of the most powerful things that we thought was very helpful. And um, obviously, uh, you know, people choose Coveo for the for the extreme reasons of like how you can build a powerful search for your website out of the box uh, using the renderings and the search views that Coveo provides. Um, this is why we picked Coveo personally for our enterprise client uh, because obviously it's like a, a great mix of good search capabilities and uh, you know a couple of easy to use, easy to plug in, uh, plug and play out of the box components. Um, and if uh, if you guys are interested to know more about Coveo in general, uh, their documentation is pretty awesome, uh, and they have like a very good uh, question question and answer community. So if you haven't already registered there, you know it's a good spot to uh, be there. Their community is very active, uh, and they have helped us bunch, uh, giving us like you know good direction uh, when we are lost, and also help us innovate uh, quite a bit. Uh, so that's a quick introduction about Coveo itself. Now, jumping to our next session, which is more about problem solving and how we solve each of the problems. Uh, the first problem that we face, uh, which is actually majority of it related to that, is because of data. The, the way we had our enterprise level clients data was like heavily hierarchical. Uh, so what was happening was we had a bunch of parent child relationships going and uh, most of it was uh, having issues in terms of like, you know, direct one to one mapping uh, to Covio uh, custom field or computed field. Uh, so uh, which is why we had to uh, choose to battle that. And the way we battled that was, um, well, we wanted to actually explore a couple of options before we entered the zone of like actually doing some customization, uh, which is always a good idea to do when we are using third party just to knock the doors and see if there's anything out of the box available before we jump deeper and do something custom. Uh, so the first thing we, we thought about was like, how about we just ask content author to enter fields, you know, even in the children uh, that we need to replicate from the parent. This is again felt very tedious, and we definitely didn't want to do that approach. So the second one that uh, you know we thought about was to load all these relationships on the client side. Uh, I think it, they call it like something called as folding, um, uh, you know, folding the results. But it was not very applicable to us in terms of what we were trying to achieve. And it is also pretty expensive when you think about it. If we are just wanting one or two fields from the parent to show up, uh, you know, when we are accessing child, it doesn't make sense to load the whole child uh, and the parent uh, to the front end in the JSON. So we steered away from it a little bit. And then how we actually got to the solution for this problem that we've had is via computed fields, uh, what Covio calls as Covio uh, computed fields and a bunch of multi-valued computed fields. Um, to explain in a nutshell what the computed fields are, they're pretty similar to what Sitecore does, um, only with the, with, the fa with the fact that we have to configure it separately for Coveo, uh, and they are, uh, you know, they return an object that is more Coveo related than Sitecore related. Um, so th th that's the main difference, but they function and they are set up quite easily as you do for Sitecore computed fields. And multi-valued computed fields is, is kind of interesting uh, because multi-valued computed fields need not be just a list picker. It could be like, you know, multiple values that are associated with multiple items on your content tree. And to be able to actually access everything and make a, like, let's say you're making a facet. Uh, you're making a cover facet out of a, a field which is spanned across multiple items in your site code tree. Multi-valued computed fields are way to go. Uh, they work beautifully and uh, you know, like with any computed fields, the load is on indexing and re-indexing. So it would never slow down your application. So you already have all these computed fields and multi-valued computed fields in your index before you even query the index. Uh, so only delta will be like, you know, um, when you change an item, when you publish an item, only then would the re-index re-indexing get triggered when it is associated with the with the, that particular item that you're changing. Uh, 
so it's it's very performance uh, you know efficient as well and uh, regarding multi valued computed fields we will touch this topic a little bit later too but i wanted to just stress that multi valued computed fields are string they're not number uh, so basically how covio does multi valued fields computed fields is via uh, you know string concatenation so if you have a com multi valued computed field you just you know append it with a semicolon and then that's how you construct a multi valued computed field so these two computed fields and multi valued computed fields help us a lot uh, battle the hierarchical data for the most part uh, you know the these two were rock stars <laughs> so um that's how we battle the hierarchical data and uh, coming to our next challenge we had uh, this is one of my favorite I, I think i talked about it multiple times uh, before but i you know i i always cannot move forward without talking about this because it's it's kind of interesting uh, so as i just you know gave a starter where multi valued number you know multi valued field is a string field it's a concatenated string field now in our enterprise client they had a requirement that they needed something which is a like you know amalgamation of two to two different uh, item fields but they wanted it to be a slider so uh, covio inherently when you use a facet slider that's one of their component uh, so when you place that slider on your page uh, it's basically like a just imagine a price slider right so you have a min you have a max uh, the end user can you know, slide slide min max or both uh, to kind of like get a narrowed result set uh in the results now uh the challenge was it was just not one field in our case if it was just one field the facet slider is amazing uh you just hook it up with either a computed number field or a regular site core number field and your slider would work uh, beautifully on the page you get the results now in our case what happened was the demand was okay so we are not looking just at one field we're looking at two fields on the same item and we wanted the slider to work essentially on the two fields across um, uh, say a given path in the content tree now how do we achieve this uh, every time we look at uh, this problem in a subtly different way we used to hit a wall um, and then finally uh, you know we 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 did a little bit of both we we used uh, uh, out of the box competent that covio provides uh, with a little of twist and uh, innovation from Wendell side. So what we did was um we basically turned off a functionality uh, that Covio uh, you know inherently gives on a slider which is computing minimum and maximum of a slider on the fly which is dynamically. Uh so we turned that off, we turned that ability off and we computed it uh from the back end. And number two, what we did was uh, once we uh, did that, we set the slider to work on just one field on Sitecore. Uh, let's call it minimum price. So it works fine on the minimum price. Now all we needed to do is how can we make this work on uh, another field uh, on Sitecore? So what we did to make that happen is. Uh, we essentially uh, used one from out of box ability which is to set um, the slider on one field and then we did something on the javascript to ensure that we are plugging in the second field uh, so that we get a good mix of both fields uh, and at the same time when the user is looking at it and when he's manipulating it he will not even know that we are actually querying uh, two fields uh, on the background it works seamlessly fine uh, so this was uh, you know this is how we we battled this challenge and uh, we used something called as advanced expressions on covio that it provides for the second filter to work and once we hooked that up uh, it started working all good um so um so two things and then we were successful after that so the next topic we we are going to talk about is sorting uh, so you know as as everybody is aware if if we have bunch of filters on the on the page and you're getting results if it's not sorted for business requirements uh, or the drive it's really hard uh, you know for the user for the end user to navigate through the search results uh, so we we felt it was really important to address sorting Uh, so Covio comes with like couple of sorting options out of the box. Uh, one is the basic sorting, which you can do on like Covio rendering or on the search view, or on a specific site core field. 
And the second one uh, we, we're going to cover today is like sorting in the tab results. Uh, if you have like bunch of tabs in your search results, how do you do sorting based on the tabs? And the third thing is using JavaScript. Um, this this comes in actually handy if you are uh, sorting on a computed uh, Covio field. And the last one is custom sorting. So uh, we will quickly look through and span through a couple of these uh, sorting options that Covio provides. So the first one is the most simple uh, sorting. Uh, so the you know how you do this is uh, on your Covio rendering on your Covio search view. Uh, there are three fields. One is uh, default sort type, and the second one is default direction, and the third one is default sort field. Uh, so you need to basically go to your Covio rendering uh, if you have say a custom search view on your presentation. You go in there, you pick these options. And uh, once you do that, your search results will be sorted based on what you have picked. Uh, for example, say you wanna uh, you wanna sort your results based on minimum price or some price factor in your uh, in your sitecore fields. So all you do is fill these fields in, and then when you actually publish your sitecore item after you make these changes, you your page will actually have the search results sorted based on the field that you picked. Uh, this is one of the most simplest ones, but one of the most um, you know useful ones as well. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out was the the default sort field. Uh, in some of the Covio versions, especially if you're using like versions maybe uh, older than last December, uh, so what you would have is it, it might not work properly. So instead of uh, actually picking a field from their field picker that they provide, uh, you can actually use a GUID of your field ID, and that should do the trick. Uh, the next one uh, is a tab result sorting. This is essentially to make sorting work on your tabs. Uh, if you have a tab component on your page, uh, th this is how you do it. Uh, so you follow the steps that we just talked about uh, in in uh, like regular sorting. But the important catch here is that you have to add a specific rendering, what Covio calls as like Covio tab rendering, or you can you know call it custom when you're making it custom. So you got to add that to your presentation. And after you add that to the presentation, you have to kind of like duplicate your default sort options that we we just talked about uh, that you can see on the right side. Uh, the default sort options are the ones that are hooked up to uh, the rendering itself, your Covio search view. And on the left side, you see the basic settings which come with your uh, custom Covio tab uh, rendering that you add on your page. So you basically have to add it on both. Uh, if you miss either of the step, the tab result sorting would not work. Uh, so th th that's the only catch there. Uh, but once you do that, you are able to set up different sorting for each of your tabs. Uh, this could come in really handy if you have like multiple tabs which are extremely different in terms of how they function and you want to tailor it with a different sorting uh, you know, strategy for each of those. Uh, the next one is a JavaScript sorting. Uh, you know the front end folks would love it uh, to easily plug in via JavaScript, uh, but the, the you know the more elegant way would be obviously like using either basic or tab result sorting. Uh, the reason you would use and which we felt useful for JavaScript sorting is because of the version uh, you know we were in. Uh, it had that catch wherein uh, the picker was not working properly in terms of picking a field for your sorting. And in that case, we, we could easily use this for a computed field because as you realize, computed field for Covio is just like Sitecore computed field. It's in memory, but it's not apparent to the content author or the content editor when you go to uh, the Sitecore instance. Uh, we could not even you know get a handler to the ID from anywhere else, so there's no ID. Uh, so in that case, is we could not do a workaround that I just talked about. Uh, um, so we had to approach it with uh, with the uh, uh, helper function that Covio provides, which is to get the Covio field name from the Sitecore field name. So that's how we, uh, you know, pull this off. And the last one is uh, custom sorting. Uh, I don't think uh, many of us would really love to use this, only because it's not dynamic enough. Uh, you actually have to declare what are your options in the rendering itself. Uh, so this is this is not extremely flexible at this point, but uh, you know 
this came in handy in a very specific instance on our case where we had uh, you know a request from the clients hey we are picking a bunch of options in a copy of asset on the load and then we navigate away from it and we we hit a back button uh, in the browser and we go back to the page what was happening was it was immediately not the sorting went off it wouldn't work anymore when you do that the reason that happens is uh, because because how inherently covio functions in, in regards to that uh, so uh, we had to kind of find a medium to ensure that the business and the uh, you know we are not killing ourselves doing that at the same time you know we are uh, satisfying the business needs uh, so it came in handy for us in this situation um, so what you basically do is you list out all your options in the covio rendering and it would exactly solve in that in that direction so if you see in this example we have 2024 to 2010 so anytime the data falls into that categories it will it will exactly have that sorting no matter what inherently covio function says no matter what's happening with the result set uh, that's how it's going to be uh, ordered in terms of sort so could be useful in some instances but you can quickly see how this can not be used if it's a dynamic data um, here we it was just years so we could pull it off but it, if you have dynamic data then steer away from this as much as possible uh, the next challenge we had was to actually dictate Covio uh, in terms of what needs to be indexed on top of what it inherently indexes when an item changes in Sitecore. Uh, so how, um, let's see how we actually did this. Uh, so uh, this, th this can happen to anyone um, because it's not very apparent unless you have your workflows in place, unless you have live content authors actually editing your site. It's very hard to figure out that there's something wrong with the setup. Uh, and it will actually like, you know, it's going to haunt you post live because if we are going to push what if without this configuration, the Covio instance live, what would happen is if you have any computed fields which are dependent on parent or children uh, or reading anywhere from the hierarchy, then the that that computed field will not be computed any longer if a child is for example, edited and your computer field is reading from the parent uh, because uh, the way Covio adds the changes to the delta uh, is is crucial here because it wouldn't add any item that you did not change uh, to the delta and it would not re-index it, uh, which is why you know there could be some confusions. Hey, I changed this item, but nothing is showing up on the on the UI, um, or the data is uh, outdated. Uh, things like that could happen, but it's harder to catch uh, when you are in uh, development phase. Uh, so this is a quick gotcha. So if you are having any computed fields uh, which depend on a hierarchy or elements related to parent or children, uh, make sure you're um, you're configuring this properly. Uh, so there is this pipeline called Covio Item Processing Pipeline. Uh, so what we need to do if you if you have such instances is to ensure you are uh, implementing uh, or overriding the process method. And there is this uh, this uh, little list that Covio prepares in terms of like guiding Covio processes on what items to index. It's called as output items. So what you need to basically do is ensure that whatever is related content on your site is added to output items collection and once you do that uh, Covio would index your uh, items that you call for and uh, you know uh, you will not be running into some issues weird issues post live uh, only thing is once you do this it has to be tested thoroughly uh, to ensure like nothing else gets added than what you're expecting and the code has to ensure it has some boundary checks uh, so that we don't run into any pitfalls uh, so the next one I'm going to talk about is related query component. Uh, the reason I feel that it's important and could it could come handy for uh, many of us who who are implementing Covio for Sitecore uh, is that there will be instances on your implementation where on uh, on a page you want multiple components with the similar query but not yet the same query that that fires with the with the custom uh, Covio component. Uh, so what would uh, what's the main necessity behind that is like say for example uh, you have a, a search result listing on your page which is paged 
right? So you have a page listing on your site, uh, but then on your page, but then you have a different component on the page that's maybe parsing through the whole uh, query results. You don't want page anymore. You want to actually get a snapshot of what are the results returned uh, by your query. Uh, or uh, there, the other scenario could be you have two different components on your page, which are cover your results, but each of them use uh, a subtly different query. So you don't want to use a complete completely different Covio search rendering. You want to reuse it, but you want to, you know, kind of display related items with a different query uh, on the behind of, of what Covio fires out. So this would come in handy in scenarios like that. Uh, so and and for me, I think th th this is pretty common. Um, you might encounter it multiple times. So uh, look into the related query component, uh, which which is I think in the newer versions of Covio. Uh, but if you if you still wanna like you know don't want it on your UI at all, uh, you don't want this new component on the UI. As I said, uh, one of the scenarios could be you're parsing through a bigger result set. Uh, so in that case case you could uh, pull this off with um, uh, JavaScript uh, so basically what you're doing here is uh, you are uh, patching on to deferred query success pipeline uh, th this is an event pipeline on Coveo and you're saying hey fire the same query but then with um, you know number of results being 200 instead of just whatever it's written in and then you do what you want to do in um, in the endpoint that the query exposes So the next challenge we had was, uh, you know, in most of the implementations, especially that are uh, client sensitive and uh, need to be protected or behind firewall uh, in most of the instances, same with us, we had our instance behind the firewall and it was protected with uh, Windows credential um, and we had trouble getting Covio to run or work in such in such situations. So we had a couple of options uh, to basically uh, work around this. Uh, so the first one is if you if you just use plain Covio renderings um, with no usage of Covio indexes on your controllers to pull a query to uh, maybe use uh, Sitecore search API uh, with uh, Covio indexes on the background, then you are pretty much, you know, you can pull this off by just adding a, a different domain on your IS. And then uh, you using that domain as your Covio server URL. So there is this uh, setting on Covio custom configuration file, which is called a server URL. So what you will basically do is you trick Covio saying that, hey, don't use this domain, use this domain. And you make sure you, the other domain that you're de defining on your IS is, uh, is you know, open at least internally, if not externally, for your servers at least, uh, so that it can index, it can make sure it run all these operations that Covio needs to do, and then you get your results on the screen. Uh, so th this option will fall short. Uh, if you're using your Covio indexes on your controllers via Sitecore Search API. So if you're doing that, and if you stick with option one, you would get you would run into 500 error um, on the pages where you are using the Covio search uh, search indexes on the background. So um, to avoid this, there are two options. One is you would disable your IS basic authentication or Windows authentication, uh, and then use IP, IP whitelisting. So you can talk to your support infrastructure to ensure that this is a possibility or your clients. Um, and the other option is to actually uh, do uh, you know, make IS authentication, um, you know, disabled uh, on a couple of Covio related uh, components on your website. Uh, one is, I think, website Covio REST, and I think there's one more. Uh, it's in Sitecore modules uh, somewhere hidden in there, but you can easily figure it out uh, with the folder name itself. Uh, it should be named Covio. So once you kind of make that anonymous, uh, then, you know, Covio search uh, component can interact with the search API, REST service, and, and then you start getting your results back in. Uh, uh, one note, uh, though, if you're going with uh, the second option here, which is making anonymous on these folders uh, that are used by Covio REST API, um, ignore some of your log errors because it can still not crawl the, uh, you know, the HTML content if you had picked that option. Uh, when you're installing Covio, typically they give two options. One is, uh, do you want to index the just the items or do you want to index the whole HTML? If you pick the HTML, which is, by the way, preferred, uh, uh, option, then you might run into some issues on your logs. Uh, so if you pick this option, you just have to ignore it. Um, so just an added note there.
So I guess that's it in terms of challenges. Uh, so right now we're going to go into debugging uh, using Covio, um, Covio out of the box components. Uh, this, I think before we even start, I must say that these are these are awesome, the tools that Covio provides out of the box. Um, the, the only reason I say it is because with any third party tool, when you are uh, trying to mold it, when you're trying to uh, build something custom with it, it's always the case that you might not be very confident uh, maybe because you don't know the inner workings of how this third party component is functioning. But the layers and the um, tools that Covio provides um, actually give you insight. And it gives you that confidence that, uh, yes, whatever I'm doing is still in the right path. You can test it out really quickly. And uh, you can help resolve issues pretty uh, pretty quickly as well. So let's look at some of the tools that uh, Covio provides out of the box. So the first one is uh, called a CES administration tool. Uh, this, is, um, this is more or less like the, my favorites uh, because it, it has got a bunch of stuff. You might not actually end up using everything if this is your first time implementation of Sitecore, of Sitecore with Coveo. Uh, but some of the features are, uh, you know, uh, really um, uh, crucial and important. Uh, some are ad very admin related. You can do a full index rebuild. You can do incremental refresh. You can check your sources and collections, your indexes, um, what kind of indexes you're having on your instance, especially if it's shared, which it, it would be in multiple instances um, because based on your server configuration, of course, uh, your architecture. But most of the time, you would reuse a Covio uh, instance to save some of your local. And if you are uh, doing a multi-development, you would have multiple uh, resources having their indexes uh, on the same Covio server or instance. So it gives a great uh, ability to actually see what are all the indexes on your Covio index, uh, Covio instance, and then um, you can rebuild them. You can uh, look at the stats. You can look at the logs. Uh, it's it's pretty intensive. Um, and then um, one of the things that would be really handy for the developers, especially, uh, is to actually look at the fields. Uh, specifically, if you're working with computed fields, or you know, you want to see how it's indexed. Is it is it indexed fine? Uh, yes, we, we are bent upon like you know to running into these issues when we are implementing uh, something which is not very native to Covio for Sitecore. So this is a great uh, way of seeing that uh, you know and also referring to your Covio field names which are uh, rather different and hashed uh, from the regular Sitecore item names and field names. So you would actually look at that all that stats here. Uh, this is called as I think uh, index listing or index browser. Uh, so this is where you uh, kind of see each item. So for example, here it's a test listing, and I'm actually able to see all the copy of fields on that particular item. Uh, so th this is again uh, the very helpful tool uh, for debugging, which is the index browser. Uh, so basically, what you can do here is um, when you have Covio components on your page, you can go into Chrome tools uh, and then you can pick what query it's firing and you can directly run it here. And you can see what's happening because there will be many cases where you see uh, sort is not applying or you, you will see that results are not matching to what you're expecting it to be. So this is a great way to get that query back in there and then test it out here so that you can see if the results are matching your expectation or if something is really wrong with your um, uh, with your uh, configuration or implementation. So this this is very handy. And uh, the last but not the least, I think the, uh, the CES console uh, is again, this is a kind of a real time uh, sneak peek into what's happening internally within the Covio components. So you can basically see what kind of queries are run here, uh, how much time it is taking, how many results you're getting. And you can also see some of the errors, like if there is if there's any system event or error logs that you want to refer to, this is a good place. And also to note, um, which I came to know actually a little bit later, is that Covio usually when you re-index or when you do something with Covio components, it does create a log file on your uh, CES server if your CES is on a different master server. So make sure to look at that because sometimes that gives cues in terms of like, you know, what errors are happening. 
And this is again uh, one of our favorites. I think I don't have to explain more. Uh, Chrome Developer Tools. It it's really handy only because you can see. Uh, I I did bring up this uh, uh, you know on one of our challenges, which is advanced expressions. Uh, so Covio basically computes something called as advanced expressions, uh, which it builds on the fly based on your settings, based on your renderings and uh, properties that you set on your renderings. Uh, so these are uh, this is really handy to actually see what Covio is computing. Uh, if you need to modify it, if you need to change it, or if you if you need to just visualize it, so this is this is a great tool to look at, look in there, um, and it also has like as you see the sort criteria, like couple of other other things that you would really want, like AQ, CQ is again something called as constant expression that Covio builds, um, so you you just get insight onto what's happening in your uh, in your request. Uh, so this is again, I think, one more example just to show uh, how Chrome tools look like and uh, how you can use it uh, to debug if there are any issues. Uh, and the Psycho Control Panel, which we talked about at the beginning of the session. So uh, on the right side is how it looks like on the Psycho Control Panel when you install Covio for Psycho. And uh, the left side is um, to build your indexes. Uh, a quick note about uh, rebuilding and about uh, configuring indexes in general is it's always a good idea to have Covio indexes for each of your environment with a different name. Uh, so you can always patch it just as you patch any other Sitecore index. If you've worked with Sitecore custom indexes before uh, in your custom Covio configuration file. And uh, this is an indexing manager tool that basically lists everything, but it also lists the Covio uh, indexing indexes as well if you need to rebuild. And uh, the last one is the diagnostic page, wherein you basically see and make sure all the Covio components are running fine. Uh, if you see a red here, it me it usually means that there's something wrong with your core components. And uh, to figure that out, uh, you need to either like you know uh, do some of the error logs, check the error logs, or restart some of the services, um, and uh, make sure you check uh, your Windows services uh, because all the Covio components like Covio admin service, uh, Covio search engine, and uh, maybe diagnostics and so Covio search API. All of them uh, are like, you know, some of them are Windows services. So make sure you check them uh, because if you're running them as like, you know, in my case, I bumped into this a couple of times where um, I was running Covio uh, search components uh, on my Windows credential. And whenever I used to change my password, uh, something used to go wrong. Uh, but if, if you don't prefer that, you can use network service or some other user that doesn't and have password expire, expired, uh, which is which is extremely important uh, on your uh, actual environments. Not might not so much on your local because you know you can live with it on your local, uh, but on your environments, make sure um, that you are uh, setting it up with a user that doesn't have an expiry on the password. So I think that's it um, for um, our journey on Covio for Sitecore. Uh, as I said, we had a bunch of challenges. I think I think more than this, but I wanted to share with everyone some of the cool things that we run we ran into that would actually be helpful uh, in real time implementations if you're using Covio for Sitecore. Uh, just one last note is we had uh, Covio for Sitecore on premise uh, version on our enterprise client, uh, but you know if you're looking for Covio for Sitecore. Very specifically now, uh, I would totally recommend to look into Covio for uh, Sitecore Cloud. I think they have a bunch of new stuff going on there, so that would be really cool. Um, add on to your project. Uh, and if you have any other questions, uh, you can you know reach out to me on the Twitter or LinkedIn, uh, or you can email me uh, at my uh, deeptirakat at wondell dot com, uh, or you can visit my blog. It is unravelsitecore dot com. Uh, it has most of the things that I listed today is uh, is actually uh, expounded more on the blog. So if you want to come, uh, you know, join uh, on the blog, you're more than welcome. Uh, so I guess thank you everyone uh, whoever joined. Um, Anandita, you, you wanna you wanna take it from here? Yeah, sure. Deepthi, just one uh, quick question. I don't know if mm -hmm. you mentioned this already. Is there a pass option for uh, Covio? Is there a pass option? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, uh, they, uh, as of, uh, I think as of two months ago, <laughs> uh, because it changes so fast, right. uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but within two months ago, I'm pretty sure they were still working on it. Uh, they, it was still under development. Okay. Uh, but there is Covio Cloud. 
but with Sitecore Pass, it's it's not I think compatible yet. Okay. They're getting there. I think they're they're burning burning themselves up to okay. make sure that they're there because uh, most of the Sitecore implementations are going cloud um, for the most part. Uh, so they're they're trying to push it, push it hard. So you guys went with Azure IaaS then. As, yes, yes. So our implementation is on uh, like uh, Azure Cloud, uh, but it's not Sitecore Pass. So, so I, we were able to, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you so much. Then, uh, if no one else has any other questions at this time, uh, I guess we can wrap up for now. As Deepthi mentioned, you can reach out to her in any of the channels that she's specified out here. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. I'll be sharing the recording shortly. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you all in the next session. Thank you again, Deepti. This is very informative. Thank you so much for the session. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And uh, have a good day, everyone. And uh, good night. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Bye-bye.